Okay, we're now going to go in and take a look at uh, creating a, a matrix or a tablix. Uh, some people call it tablix also. <clears throat> and again, we'll use the same uh, shared data set that we used in the last one. So we're going to come up to take a look at Athena Group 2012 and products by category and subcategory. Now we'll come down here and here in my values, I'll take the list price and drop that down. And in my row groups, I'm going to take uh, my uh, subcategory ID and drop that on down here. And in my column groups, I'm going to take category ID. Come on through and the standard stuff in here. We'll select next. And again, let's select this time corporate. And we'll come through and finish it and we'll resize it so we can see it a little better. And resize the data region again just so you can see it a little bit better in here. So you notice as we came in here now we have different the columns as we come on down here. Here's my header, here's my details, and here's my sum, and then my products, my tablets coming on across like a pivot table. So let's run it just to take a look. And here we have it. <clears throat> so here's my uh, uh, category ID one through four, and here's my subcategory ID one, two, and three. And as you see now, as I drop down here into two, I've got four, five, six, etc. And as we run it all the way down to the bottom, let's go down to the last, to the end there. And now you can see my totals and my subtotals. Let's go back over to design, and we'll change up the display a little. We can come through and click out of that. I'm going to select all that. I'm going to right click in here. Okay, what I want to do is I want to change my display. So I'm going to click in this box and then I'm going to use my standard window stuff, control click to select all of that. And now I'm going to right click in here and I want to come in and I want to take a look at the text box properties. Oops, screwed that one up. You got to do these one, one at a time. Sorry, folks. Thinking of something else. Text box properties. So we come down here like this. We'll go down, we'll go to a number, and we'll do currency. And this time I'll leave two, two. And I'll use a separator in here just to show you a little bit of a difference. And I'll say that's okay. And same thing. Oops. Click down in here. And again, text box properties. And I'll come down here, number. And I'll just do a little bit. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. Change that down here, and I use a separator just so you can see the different things. And now we'll come through and run it. And again, here's my 000, zero, zero as I drop on down. And then I've got my currency over here. I go down to the last. I've got seven, currency down here is my 1785 and 996 with no zeros. Back over to design view. And now if I come through here, you see the de the row column detail. If I right click in here, I can insert a row or you can de delete a row and I can add groupings. Also, I could add a parent group. So let's come through and this is my subcategory and I'm going to come down here like this, select it, and I'm going to add a parent row, uh, add group, add parent group, group by, now I can come down here. I can. I can pick my different things. So I'm just going to grab something just to show you the difference. So we'll, we'll come in there, we'll add a header and a footer. And we'll see it okay. And that's done that. And let's run it. So now again, we've come through and let's go to the last. And we've got this shown out down in here with both my headers and my footers. Subcategory, and you see the grouping down here. So here's my product category, subcategory ID. So here's one, one, two, and three. Here's two, four, five, and six as we come on across. Now, if these were descriptive names, uh, that might make more sense. But then again, it all depends on your environment. Let's go back over to design view. Okay, let's take a look at some uh, tablets properties. Again, let's run it. So here you see the product subcategory, my category IDs, and we can filter this. Let's go back over to design, and now we'll click so we can get this border up. And now I'm going to right click in the border, and I'll go Tablix Properties. Here's my visibility, which is the same as we just went through and we looked at uh, when we were overdoing tables. We'll come down here in filters, and I'm going to add a filter. So I'm going to say Add Filter, Expression, 
<clears throat> and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick my uh, product subcategory ID and it's equal to and I'm going to set a value in here of 1 and we'll say OK and now we'll run the report and you notice now I'm just bringing back my subcategory ID with a, sub, a, a subcategory ID of 1 back over to design Okay, went back into the properties. I'm turning this off and turning on the uh, recorder so that you won't have to watch me click on through it. I want to get rid of this, so I'm going to select in here and I'm going to delete it on out. And now, well, let's go down to the sorting. I can come through and I could add a sort option. The same thing, I can come through and I can say sort by whatever it is I'm going to do. I'm going to say product ID, which is A to Z. So it's the same sort as we had before. Let me cancel out of that. Or I can build an expression. Uh, we're not going to do expressions at this time. That's a little bit later on. So let's cancel out of that because I really don't want to do a sort. And instead, let's go in and look at the columns. I'm going to right click up here on the column. And again, I can do column groupings. I could do a parent group. This time we're going to do a child grouping and we're going to group by. And I'm just going to grab something in here to show you the, the different child grouping. And let's group by product ID and show detailed data. And I'll say OK and we'll run it and now I have this grouping as I come on across and what you want to do here when you're doing these groupings right, is you'll actually come through and you see how long that is you'll come through and you'll do your grouping first off get your data that you want to display don't worry about it making it look pretty you'll clean that up a little bit later on now once you have your data displayed you decide on your grouping and your uh, uh, subgrouping etc remember the advantage of the matrix here is the ability to do the different grouping and, and by the way these text box properties are the same as we looked at when we were over into a table uh, you see this icon here this long line wraps the inner line that tells you that you have a grouping up here like this. So again, I can come in here and I can come in and I can do some things. I can do a summarization and change my summarization. So that instead of it's a sum, I can go to account, etc. Whatever it is we want to display. Now, what you see as I move in, now I'm in the subgroup. And as I move out, you see the orange arrow says expanded on out orange arrows which is one of the reasons you don't want to print this courseware anymore you just want to use interactive whatever mine is a voice crying in the wilderness all right so now i can come through and i can select that and you notice both these groups wrap each other so i can come down here like this and i can right click again text box properties it's the exact same thing as when i was over there and i was doing text box properties in a table English, you don't know, use common separator, sounds fine, and that sounds okay. And again, all you do it, you go to run, you look at it, you like it, you don't like it, and then you come back on across. It's, this is um, agile development. Um, uh, if you don't know what agile development is, it's really a, a, a you, you should investigate it. So what you do is you do quick little changes and then you save them and you look at them, see is that what you want? You come back and forth, back and forth. So the idea is that eventually you'll get out there and put out a product that the customer actually likes. Oh, crazy talk, crazy talk. Let's see what else we got down here. Oh, okay, I can add in here. I can insert columns the same as I did. So I'll insert a column down there into the right. You notice this column, you see that separator. This column Again, let's go ahead and pick something, just grab something in, and it adds on in the list price, sum, etc. Because I am in a matrix, it's going to auto populate for me. Okay, let me pause. Okay, I dumped that matrix on out. We're going to go back over to the insert tab, and now I'm going to go matrix, and we'll go insert matrix, and we'll drag this on down. All right, now without using, you see I've got my data, my columns, and my rows. And if I pick this and I go list price, sum list price, and now my header, list price, and now my rows down here like this, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take, uh, let's do product ID, and I've got product ID and sum list price. Let's run it. All right, so here's my product ID and here's the list price. Okay, let's go ahead and categorize this a little further. So I'm going to click over here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to insert the row, I'm going to insert a grouping row below where I'm at. <clears throat> Alright, so I've got my grouping row down here, 
And now I can come in and I can come in and I can add different information that I want in my grouping row. Okay, you see this row that we just came through and added. Now if I come through there, I can click like this and I could go in and I can add something that I want. So I already have my list price and I've got my product ID and which is down in here. So I could add that if I run it this time, here's my row. Let's go back over and change something. I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to add a group. I'm going to add a parent group, group by, uh, it, it, I'm just trying to show you this, I'm not trying to make a whole lot of sense. Add group header, add group footer. Okay, and we'll run it. And now I've got my group header. You see that one, which is that product ID. As I come across one, two, three, four. Back over to design. So I've got this product category ID. Okay, I went back into that row and I added just the text, product ID is right there. Let's just change it out so you can see it a little better. Let's go down to, it doesn't really much matter. Just changing the font so you can see it a little better. And we'll go down here with blue, just so you can, so you can see it. Product ID is one, product ID is two. So I can drop this on across, and this is what you do. You come through and you, you fill these on out, resize them, reformat them, etc. And one more thing, let's take a look at the Tablix's properties. So I'm going to click out of it, click into it to get this up. I'll right click and I'll go Tablix properties, which we already took a look at, but I forgot to show you general. So your name, and if you're going to have a tool tip, that's fine. And the data set that it's actually going to use. And here's your options. You can do the page breaks. You can do red head, row headers. You can repeat them on each page or not, right? And column headers, whether you want to repeat or not. And it really depends you know, on how you're going to format the out, output, out, uh, output. Again, your visibility is the same. We showed you the filters and we showed you sorting. And that's it for the Tablix. Tablix is uh, the best overall uh, data region that we can use for summarization of data.